Quote. For the third time, here I am attempting to film my latest video. First, I was going to go with a more serious tone, and then I was going to go with a more goofy tone. But, you know, I just decided to do me. Everybody should do me. Today's video is about something I almost never talk about and never thought I'd do. Today, I'm going to discuss a societal issue. Oh, my God. Uh, how do I begin <laughs> this shitstorm of a topic? Okay, remind your brains to a few years back, the city of Boston undergoes uh, probably what was the second worst terror attack of the modern era on American soil when uh, a couple of guys blew up the Boston Marathon. Remember that? Yeah. Uh, Reddit, as you know, was with some assistance from 4chan and whoever the hell else, Decided to go on a, you know, personal manhunt to try and find the asshole who was responsible. They used, you know, bits and pieces of security camera footage and pictures and identified some dude's backpack. And then lo and behold, they came to a conclusion that it was this guy. And it turns out this guy was not the guy. And uh, after endless bullying and harassing and doxing and all these terrible things that these people did to him the young man offed himself fast forward to today and pro jared fellow youtuber much more successful than i am retro gaming uh aficionado gets accused of a lot of things some of which were true he was having marital problems there was definitely some sexual intercourse outside of the marriage although he contends that it was purely consensual but uh, also and this is what ruined his youtube channel uh, sexual harassment of a young lady, as well as some uh, kitty diddling, maybe, accompanied with some exchange of explicit photographic material. And then Pro Jared releases a video with some, like, honestly, pretty compelling evidence that uh, none of the, the worst stuff he was accused of was true, and that it was merely a case of infidelity and then a select number of attention whores jumping on that particular bandwagon to kick him while he was down. My own personal opinion, which I largely kept to myself because it was none of my business, was that uh, if it's true, when I first heard it, I thought, wow, that's that sucks. And I don't really think I want to watch his videos anymore. Much the same way I don't watch Roman Polanski movies or Woody Allen movies or uh, old reruns of The Cosby Show. I guess. But uh, I hadn't actually drawn any conclusions. And that's that's precisely what this video is about. Whether it be the Boston Bomber situation or the James Charles situation or the Pro Jared situation, uh, this rant comes from a place of me just wanting desperately with my tiny little audience to spread a little fucking sanity and get everybody to calm the fuck down with the rushing to judgment. We need to end the cycle of fast over fact. It isn't entirely our fault. There's a history here, of course. For those of you who are not fans of news media like myself, you may not have experienced this. But believe me, back in the day, back when I used to read newspapers, and yes, I am that old, people would publish all kinds of shit in order to make the morning deadline or the six o'clock news on television or the 11 o'clock news. And some of it would be wrong. And rather than wait and publish the correct information, for the sake of ratings, they would just put the piece out with the bits and pieces that they had and issue a correction in the next day's edition. Better to ask for forgiveness than permission, right? And if you've ever watched live event coverage on television, you'll know that there are similar mistakes made, and some of which are never retracted because they're sort of presented under the guise of live action. It's just like, we're just off the cuff here, reporting shit as it comes in. Don't blame us if it's not true even though everyone will believe it's true long after the program's ended. I would implore you to go back and watch the 9-11 footage from CNN, or any news network, really. I don't want to single out CNN. Just watch it, unedited, from start, from when the planes hit, till end. And and it's, in, in retrospect, it's a little bit freaking horrifying. To, to just listen to all the things that they they put out on the air and got blatantly wrong. I remember at one point during the broadcast, they were just like, reports are coming in that there's still nine more planes unaccounted for in the air. And I was just like, oh guys, okay, you know, you're trying to spread information, not fear. But I am nothing if not a man of solutions and uh, attempting to film a video over two separate days and make it look like it's one. I'm here to impart what little wisdom I have on the subject onto you in the hopes that you make better decisions about how you consume media 
and how you react to it. The first step, in my opinion, is to disconnect yourself from it, like almost entirely. What I think we've been able to determine is that fast news is not reliable news. And if it's not reliable news, what fucking good is it at all? I have pretty much unfollowed everyone on Facebook. Like all of my friends, I just don't follow them. They're still friends, I can still talk to them. I can still see their feeds if I wish, but my feed is entirely empty because none of their shit is passing by my face on the ticker. So anyone who has a certain political bias or opinions about something that's current and hot, I miss out on. My thinking is, is that if something is truly important and groundbreaking, you're gonna hear about it through other channels. And very few things in news media today are that pertinent to your life that you can't afford to wait a few days to figure out what's going on. So, you know, things like planes crashing into buildings, yes, that's something that, of course, you'd wanna be informed of immediately. And believe me, if something like that were to ever happen again, you'd know about it, whether you were disconnected from media or not. And as for all the rest of the stuff that usually would help you shape and form your opinions and your worldview, all of that stuff is just better left to simmer for a few days. My advice, honestly, is just to go look at Wikipedia. They have a news summary there every day on the front page that just tells you what's happening in general. And Wikipedia, you know, for all of its flaws, given enough time, it's actually pretty statistically accurate. Much more so than what you're gonna see on Twitter, that's for sure. Number two, I briefly touched on this in my last point, but discern the pertinence of a given issue to your life and modulate your interest accordingly. When it comes to things like preparing yourself for the next election cycle, I understand you kinda of have to dive in, but the sorts of issues that I think people should be focusing on aren't the hot button issues anyway. And I think ultimately this stems from the fact that news that is not particularly pertinent is the sexy stuff. It's Those are the hot button issues that really don't affect a hell of a lot of people in their day to day lives, but just make for exciting debates online, interesting conversation and a chance to sort of flex your intellectual muscles in front of everybody on Twitter. So in short, figuring out what matters to you will probably usually help you in weeding out all the crap you really don't need in your ears. And furthermore, I'm not really talking about the formulation of opinions here. I mean, you can have snap judgments, just I would recommend you keep them in here is the key. And that brings me to my third point. Number three, don't be part of the problem. So I have a general rule about all things in social media where I just don't remark on them until a certain amount of time has passed. Your hastened contribution to the discussion only compounds it. Whether you're right or wrong, doesn't matter. And that is precisely why this video is going to be uploaded probably a good week after the Pro Jared video drops. I'm not gonna get any views, no one's gonna care. So in short, my entire spiel can be summed up in this one convenient Italian restaurant analogy. Number one, don't be that idiot that fills up on breadsticks. Number two, order something from the menu that you actually want. And three, don't leave a Yelp review until you actually finish the fucking meal. So that's basically it. Rant over. As for future videos, uh... I promised I'd go shopping for PC parts and get back to my actual bread and butter on this... Bread and butter? Get back to my actual bread and butter on this channel. But uh, it's honestly proving to be really, really difficult. Uh, so who knows? I'm going to be uploading more videos. Just uh, who knows about what? Am I going to stick with this whole life guru shit? I don't know. I suppose you'll just have to stay tuned and find out, I guess. Oh God, I look so gross when I drink. It's like a fucking duck trying to deep throat a moose.